Good morning. This morning we're going to be talking about thesis statements and topic sentences. And I have four goals for today's session. The first of these is that at the end of the session, students will understand the difference between a thesis statement and a topic sentence. The second goal is students will be able to identify a thesis statement and a topic sentence that are contained in an essay. The third goal is to students for students to be able to write a thesis statement. And the fourth goal is for students to be able to write a topic sentence. So I've been talking about an essay. And an essay is a short piece of writing on a particular subject. And in the, um, the program that you are in, you're preparing for your high school equivalency, you will be asked to write an extensive, extended answer, extended response, which is um, an essay. And on the high school equivalency tests, you'll be given a prompt. And the prompt is simply a passage that helps you start writing. And most likely, it will be a comparison of two passages on the same subject. You read both of them, and then you're asked to compare them and take a position on which, are the, which one or the other that you would support. Um, essays can be informational, where they are just simply presentations of content and information, but more likely they're to, intended to be persuasive. They're called argumentative. And that's mostly what we'll be looking at um, in the program today. So thesis statements and topic sentences are simply tools. And looking at these um, extended responses that you will be doing, you will be using thesis statements and topic sentences to organize your ideas when you have been given your prompt. You'll put them down on paper um, and begin to plan your essay. And then once your essay is completed, they will be within your writing, what you've written for your essay. And therefore, these tools will guide your reader through the essay so that the reader gets what you want them to get out of what you wrote. And then as a tool, they also help you um, track the prompt so you make sure that you are responding to what's being asked of you when you're taking the test and writing the extended response. So what is a thesis statement? Um, a thesis statement summarizes the main idea of the whole essay and it establishes a claim or an argument that you're making in your essay. And it also will clearly establish your position on the issue. And it'll give the reasons why you have taken that position. And the thesis statement is often found in the introductory paragraph because you're setting up that thesis very first thing so you can tell the reader what you're going to tell them. Now, a topic sentence is found in each paragraph and it summarizes the main idea of the paragraph and it is a strong statement that points back to the main idea that was presented in the thesis statement and it's kind of a connection between paragraphs one paragraph to the next paragraph so that it builds the writer's ideas from that original thesis statement and the topic sentence again is usually found at the first part of that sentence, or excuse me, at the first part of that paragraph, so that again, it can tell the reader what you're going to tell them. So I'm going to start by reading an essay um, called The Real Rosa Parks. And um, as I read this essay, I'd like you to notice how the author is drawing the reader through the essay using a clear thesis statement and strong topic sentences in the paragraphs that follow. All right. So it's called The Real Rosa Parks by Paul Rogat Loeb. And of course, this is just an excerpt. I've just taken a few of the paragraphs out of the entire essay and just parts of each of the paragraph. But I think it demonstrates our point. So let me read it. We learn much from how we present our heroes. A few years ago on Martin Luther King Day, I was interviewed on CNN. So was Rosa Parks by phone from Los Angeles. 
We're very honored to have her, said the host. Rosa Parks was the woman who wouldn't go to the back of the bus. She wouldn't get up and give her seat in the white section to a white person. That set in motion the year-long bus boycott in Montgomery. It earned Rosa Parks the title Mother of the Civil Rights Movement. I was excited to hear Parks' voice and to be part of the same show, but it occurred to me that the host's description, the, the story's standard rendition, stripped the Montgomery boycott of all of its context. Before refusing to give up her bus seat, Parks had been active for 12 years in the local NAACP chapter, serving as its secretary. The summer before her arrest, she, and then it goes on with some biographical information of the work that she had done in social justice for the previous decade. Now in his, his essay, he goes on in the next paragraph, in short, Rosa Parks didn't make a spur of the moment decision. She didn't signal handedly give birth to the civil rights efforts, but she was part of an existing movement for change at a time when success was far from certain. We all know Parks's name, but few of us know about the Montgomery NAACP head, E.D. Nixon, who got, served as one of her mentors and first got Martin Luther King involved. And then it goes on and finally in the same paragraph says, without the often lonely work of people like Nixon, Randolph, and Robinson, Parks would likely have never taken her stand. And if she had, it would never have had the same impact. The next paragraph. This in no way diminishes the power and historical importance of Parks' refusal to give up her seat. But it reminds us that this tremendously consequential act along with everything that followed, depended on the, all the humble and frustrating work that Parks and others undertook earlier on. It also reminds us that Parks' initial step of getting involved was just as courageous and critical as the stand on the bus that we have all heard about. So in this essay, in the beginning portions of this essay, Loeb has given us um, a strong thesis statement telling us that the way our heroes are presented tells us a lot about them, but it also tells us, or it fails to tell us other things. And then he goes on and he supports it. And each of his paragraphs tells us in that what the strong topic sentence, what is going to come next that's going to support that thesis statement. So he's drawn us again, he's drawn us through his essay using those tools. So as I said earlier, the essay prompt will require a student to discuss something, take a position on something, maybe analyze the strengths and the weaknesses of a passage or two that has been given to them in the test. So before you write, you want to focus on the action words in the prompt. You want to make absolutely sure that you know what you're being asked to do before you start writing. Because if you get off on the wrong track, you'll lose points because you're writing something, but you're not writing what they asked you to write. Um, and then after you know what's be, been asked for, you're going to form a little question in your head. And this is a mental exercise. You're going to form a question from that prompt. And then you're going to answer that question. And that little exercise forms the basis of your thesis statement because it's your, your position. You've taken a position through that question and answer exercise. And then you're gonna brainstorm your ideas as to why, when you ask the question, you gave the answer and you gave that answer because, 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 and those um, ideas probably will become the paragraphs that follow your, your thesis statement. So I'm gonna demonstrate that through this example. And here's the prompt. Rosa Parks has been called the mother of the civil rights movement. Write a short essay that either supports or opposes 
that characterization of her contribution to the civil rights movement. Now, I want to point out here that there's no right or wrong answer here. You can, you can be among those who feel like she took a courageous step that day. She put herself out there. She was the one that bore the consequences of her subsequent arrest. Um, so she deserves that title. And you could, you could answer that question in that way. You might also be on the other side. And you might be sort of our, our um, Paul Loeb had answered it, I think, that no, she was kind of part of a larger movement. And maybe she really doesn't deserve that spotlight all by herself because she was preceded by many, many others who stood, who came before her and stood behind her at that time. So both arguments have merit. You're going to take one position and then you're going to support it with your subsequent paragraphs and your strong topic statements. Now, going on with this exercise, I'm going to um, take a position. And so when I take a position, I'm going to say um, to the question that I formed, I formed the question, is Rosa Parks the mother of the civil rights movement? And then I'm gonna answer that question and I'm gonna answer it, yes. Rosa Parks' refusal to move to the back of the bus took courage, and she deserves to be called the mother of the civil rights movement. And that's just, that's my answer. Um, so I'm going to follow that up and use that as, in my thesis statement. So I'm going to then do that brainstorming exercise that I said. Now, why did I say that? Well, here are my reasons. She worked hard that day, and she deserved to sit and the first available seat that she um, came to when she boarded that bus. And that the order from the bus driver to tell her to get up and make way for another passenger who got on after she did, that made her angry. So I'm going to use those, those conditions in the moment as my reasoning. And then I'm gonna follow that up with, she belonged to a community that she knew would support her if she was arrested. So even though she bore the consequences of that, she also knew she had a community standing behind her. So that gave her courage in that moment. And then I'm going to say that she also knew other people that had acted with courage. And so these are all the reasons why in that moment she acted and because she acted, she deserves that title. And before you go on to the next slide, I think okay. it's, you know, when, when you come up with your thesis statement or your topic sentence here, you know, your reasons might be different. Not everybody's going to come up with the same reasons to support their side, and that's okay. So as long as you're coming up with, with good reasons that support why you took that position, that's what's important. Your essay might look different from a tutor's that you're working with or from someone else that you that is writing on the same topic. And that's OK. Yes, yes. That's really important um, to know. I know I've been working with students who have um, gone in a completely different direction with their writing than I would have. And it's been um, interesting to me that they had um, this other very important and uh, it had a very good message to it when they constructed their essay. Well, it wasn't the one that I would have done. And I, you know, it's it's perfectly fine. So that's a very good example of um, why it's your answer and your essay. So, um, so I'm going to draft my 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 thesis statement again as I as I'm constructing my own essay. And so my thesis statement is. Rosa Parks was the perfect person to defy the order to move to the back of the bus on December 1st, 1955. So that's my thesis statement. And then I'm going to support it. And by doing that, I'm going to return to those reasons. And as we just discussed, they're my reasons. They might be not somebody else's reasons, but they're my reasons. And so I'm going to return to the reasons that I listed when I drafted my thesis statement. And then I'm going to write a paragraph that describes each of those reasons. And each paragraph will have a topic sentence that links the paragraph to the thesis. And so here's my kind of mini essay. And because we're on PowerPoint, we got limitations. It's a tiny essay, but it would be bigger if I was maybe writing for a longer time. Rosa Parks is rightly called the mother of the civil rights movement. 
Rosa Parks was the perfect person to defy the order to move to the back of the bus on December 1st, 1955. Her courage on that day led to the historic bus boycott in Montgomery, Alabama. And because of that boycott, of that boycott demands for racial justice were heard throughout the country. I'll go to the next paragraph. On December 1st, 1955, Rosa Parks relaxed into the first available seat in the colored section of a city bus in Montgomery, Alabama. She was tired after working a full day as a seamstress at a local department store. Now my paragraph could continue describing how she's on her feet all day. She has questions from customers. They, you know, really a, a very, very long day. She had a long walk to the bus stop. I could give a lot more detail, but for the sake of this, um, this essay, I'm going to go on to the second paragraph. When the bus driver, James Blake, yelled, y'all better make it light on yourselves and let me have those seats, Rosa Parks was angry and refused to move. When the driver told her, I'm going to have you arrested, Parks said, you may do that. So I move on to the third paragraph. Parks was not new to civil rights activism. She served as secretary of the Montgomery, Alabama NAACP and had been mentored by NAACP head E.D. Nixon. She was involved in criminal justice reform, particularly issues of police brutality. And then I would go to another paragraph that says, Rosa Parks knew other people who had stood with courage to oppose injustice. The summer before her arrest, Rosa Parks attended a 10-day training session at the Highlander Center, where she met an older generation of civil rights activists, including a South Carolina activist named Septima Clark. So these, this is my brief essay that responds to the prompt. One topic, one thesis statement in the introductory paragraph, followed by subsequent paragraphs um, that we're going to look at now. So you can see how my essay was set up. Thesis statement at the top, introduction, and then each paragraph with a strong topic sentence. And then each if of I those just paragraphs. Talk to you one last time about the thesis statement. One thing that's yes. also just good to know, and if, if you could go back to your Rosa Parks thing really quick. A good thing yeah. that makes a good thesis statement is that I don't have to know what the question is to understand what the essay is going to be about from reading that first sentence. When I look at that first sentence, I look at that sentence and I have a good expectation of what I'm about to read about. And that makes a really good piece of statement is without having to read the question, the reader knows what their essay is going to be um, talking about. And so really thesis sentences and topic sentences really both deal with expectation. They're setting the expectation for the reader. And so I, I think this does a really good job of highlighting that, of showing how once we have that really good topic sentence, everything else that Trudy has shown so far has shown that, you know, the, they build on what the topic sentence introduced. We haven't gone radically off topic talking about something else. Everything sort of follows from that idea introduced at the very beginning. Thank you. Yeah, that's, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so we've got this form and you can see how it, how it, how it builds. It's just, um, as, just as Chris said. So let's go into my, my um, subsequent paragraphs and their, their topic sentences. We just talked about the, um, how the thesis statement tells the reader what you're going to tell them. Well, the first paragraph, begins, um, and again, it, it comes from that brainstorming session I did when I was planning my essay. I thought, she worked hard all day. So then I put that in, the in this first paragraph. On December 1st, 1955, Rosa Parks relaxed into the first available seat, the colored section of the city bus in Montgomery, Alabama. She was tired after working a full day as a seamstress in the local department store. So right away, I'm telling that student, that was the setting. That was what who she was that day. And that's how she felt. So I make that as part of, of the moment 
when she's working up to her, um, her refusal to move. And then I build on that with the second paragraph because she settled into her seat. She just got comfortable and they come to the next stop or another couple stops along the way. And the bus driver yells something that makes the big tournament. Y'all better make it light on yourselves and let me have those seats. And that made her angry. And so the bus driver says, I'm going to have you arrested. And she says, you may do that. So again, I had that um that as a reason why she was in that moment and she deserves that title because she rightly got angry and she acted on that anger so she was the perfect person she was a perfect person because when she was angry she knew it so um i go on in my essay to then look at her as a somewhat of her biography um she's also the perfect person because as I said in my brainstorming, parks belonged to a community that she knew would support her if she was arrested. So she knew she had support. And so I write, Rosa Parks had been working for justice in her community for a decade. Going on to mention that she served as secretary of the Montgomery, Alabama NAACP and had been mentored by NAACP head E.D. Nixon. And she was involved in criminal justice reform, particularly issues of police brutality. So this background, I say in my essay, brought her to this moment, the moment when she could act on her anger because she was tired. You see how that builds? I started with my thesis statement. She's a perfect person. She's a tired person. Now she's mad. And she has this background that brings her into that moment. So here's my fourth paragraph. And remember that fourth brainstorming item I had was she also knew other people who had acted with courage. Rosa Parks had role models for the action that she led that led to her arrest. That summer before her arrest, Rosa Parks attended a 10 day training session at the Highlander Center, where she met older generation of civil rights activists, including South Carolina activists named Septima Clark. So having role models in her life gave her courage. But she was the woman in that moment who had combined her feelings that day, her acknowledgement that she's mad, angry, her background in social justice, and the fact that she knows other people who had had similar moments in their lives. So that's the basis for my essay that supports my thesis statement, which is she's the perfect person for that moment and she deserves that title. So I go on, you know, in just that way. She was a perfect person, she was tired, the driver made her angry, and she knew about these things of social justice and she had role models that supported her. So that's the way um, I'm encouraging students to build an essay and to do just a few minutes when you're when you're asked, you've got a timed, timed extended response to take a few minutes to think that through. What do I think about what's being asked of me? Okay, I know what I'm thinking about it. Why do I think that? Boom, boom, boom. And you um, do that by reading the prompt carefully, knowing what's being asked. That's the most important thing. You can't write on something that's not asked for. Taking a position, again, not a right or wrong position, your position, and then defending, and then um, writing a clear thesis statement that reflects that position so that your reader knows, as Chris said earlier, the, the, the reader doesn't have to know what the prompt was. The reader wants to know what you think. So you're writing that clear thesis statement about what you think, and then you're supporting it with your subsequent paragraphs that each has a strong topic sentence that brings you into that paragraph, but then points the reader back to the thesis statement so that it all flows pretty well. And, and, so and if I can jump in one last time here, um, yeah. you mentioned the part where you said taking a position. One of the biggest areas where people have trouble with their essays is because the, essay, the prompt is written in a way that they could choose one side or the other, some people say, say oh, well, I think that there's a balance between the two. And they try to write an essay that defends both sides. 
And that's really not going to be very useful for passing a standardized test. On the standardized test, they want you to defend one side or defend the other. They don't want you to, to sit in the middle. They want you to, to really strongly pick for or against, yes mm -hmm. or no. Okay, yeah, yeah, good, good, good point. Okay, so this is this is really does conclude my um, my presentation today. I do want you to see just at the end. I've put a little outline in an essay. It's it's helpful. I think it's a visual that helps you write that thesis statement and then go boom, 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 and making sure that you after you've done your strong topic sentence, you have details that follow that topic sentence to make it true. So that is um, that's what. I think that does for you, and I appreciate your time, and I, I think that's all. It's, it's